The Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Uh, uh, hello. Good morning. This Simon Templer, the saint? Good morning. I'll tell him when he comes in. For a saint, you sleep pretty late. Uh, it's because of my... Hey, who is this? You know Miles Banning? Miles Banning? Yeah, I know him slightly. I got a message for him. You know his daughter, Felice? Yeah, a cute little girl with braces on her teeth and pigtails. What about her? She's almost 18 now, no more pigtails. But nobody misses him, you know what I mean? Look, my friend, if you have a message for Banning, why not give it to him yourself? He gets excited. I want you to break it to him gently. It'll cost him 200 grand to get his daughter back. Get her back? Well, who's got her? I have. And I want the money tonight, tell him, at his place on the bay. His place on the bay, and... I suppose I tell him that if he doesn't pay, he'll never see his daughter again? He'll see her, all right. He'll see her. But he'll wish he hadn't. <laughs> Goodbye, Saint. Hey, wait a minute, my friend. H Hello? 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 Your party has hung up, sir. Do you have his number? Not yet, operator. But I'm going to try real hard. <laughs> Go right in, Mr. Templer. Mr. Banning's been waiting since you called. Oh, thank you. Uh, Templer, come in. Come in. Oh, thank you, Mr. Banning. I'm sorry we had to meet again under such... You heard from him. She's all right. She is all right. Well, I think there's very little doubt about it, Mr. Banning. And until he gets the money, he would hardly... How much? How much does he want? $200,000 by tonight. All right. He shall have it. You can raise that amount in such a short time? He's got Felice. Yes. Tell me, when did it happen? Uh, two days ago, from a school. Uh, from Miss Godby's, a finishing school. I've been waiting to hear ever since. You've notified the police? The police? What are they to do with it? Well, after all, in a forcible kidnapping with a man threatening violence... Kidnapping? Violence? My dear Templar, this man isn't threatening to kill Felice. He's threatening to marry her. Marry her? Yes. Oh, I see, and, uh... She's willing to marry him? Unfortunately, she is. That's the tragic part of it. You see, she's only 17. Uh, then you must know the man. Well, as well as you ever know any man who takes care of your horses, I employed him as a groom. His name is Hendron, Tony Hendron. And you're willing to pay $200,000 to keep this marriage from happening? Oh, more, more. Felice has a million-dollar trust fund from her mother. She'll be an heiress at 21. I'll pay anything. He wants the money at your place on the bay tonight. Do you have any idea why he didn't call you direct? I'm afraid I'd have detectives here checking the call, I imagine. Uh, but you didn't. Well, why not? The police are pretty good at finding well, people. I couldn't take a chance on this thing getting in the papers, Templar. You can see that. Oh, of course. And I might try picking up his trail. Before tonight? Uh, it's possible. Not probable, but possible. Well, I think my first stop will be Miss Godby's school, Mr. Banning. I'll let you know if I find anything and... Look, try to relax. Things will work out all right. Relax? If you had a daughter who was trying to throw her life away, you couldn't... Of course I couldn't. I promise you one thing, Mr. Banning. I'll do my best to find her. I know you will. I beg your pardon. Uh, oh. You... Frighten me. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, could you tell me where to find Miss Godby? I am Miss Godby. Oh, how fascinating. <laughs> well, that is, I am head of Miss Godby's school. And while I'm really Mr. Godby, still there's always been a Miss Godby at the head of Miss Godby. So, in a sense, I am Miss Godby. Uh, e yes. yes. You see, the school was founded by my great-aunt, Hazel Godby. My office is right down the hall here. And ever since then, it's been a tradition with us Godbys to... What? Oh, Girls, 
girls, young ladies, please. Come right in here, sir. Thank you. Uh, honestly, Mr. Uh, uh, Templer, Simon Templer. Honestly, Mr. Templer, there are times when I'm almost glad Great Aunt Hazel is not alive today. God be girls, today are... are... well... You saw? It was a little frightening. Flattering, but frightening. That's exactly it. Frightening. The word for the modern generation, frightening. I was just visiting one of our most interesting and traditional classes. How to enter a drawing room. And what do you think I found there? Apathy. Absolute, undisguised apathy. Mr. Godby, I'm here about Felice Banning. A case in point. A young girl from one of the most socially prominent families in this city, and she runs away with a jockey, a groom. Worse, if this ever gets into the papers, Mr. Templer, I'm afraid that Miss Godby's is finished. That is the word, finished. Felice did leave here, then, with Hendren. Certainly. I told her father so. Any ideas about where the two of them might have gone? Miss... Mr. Templer. Uh, yes, I withdraw the question. <clears throat> oh, you'll have to excuse me, Mr. Templer. There are just a few classes I insist on teaching myself, and this is one of them. Fine needlework. Mm. <laughs> if you care to sit in and wait. Oh, thank you. I will, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gartley. Uh, well, then, uh, until later. Yes, until later. <laughs> Sir. Sir, <don't> <laughs> That's a fascinating question. I am not like those those adolescents down the hall. Exhibitionists. Are you saint? Yes, I am. Then you're here about Felice. You know Felice? She's my roommate and dearest friend. Oh, uh, please sit down, Miss... Uh... Morrison. Barbara Morrison. Well, I'd like very much to have words with you uh, about Felice. <laughs> well, I've made a deep study of her. She's a psychological wreck. I see. Hmm. Uh, did she talk to you about a man named Tony Hendren? She thought she couldn't talk to me about men because she was 17. It's a very uninteresting age, really. Uh, I much prefer 21 myself. You do, actually? Well, isn't that a coincidence? I'm 21. Yeah, naturally. Uh, Barbara, do you have a theory about why Felice would run away with Tony Hendren? Well, she'd never marry him, of course. She'll never marry anyone. For any particular reason? Father fixation. Roughly the reverse of the more familiar Oedipus situation with a male child. Her life is completely subordinate to that of the beloved, all-powerful father. Though why, I don't know. Her father's a horrible mess. Then you don't think she'd marry Hendon? It's not as simple as that. She might see a father symbol in him. Or this might be a temporary rejection of authority. Or, or it might be love. Love? How utterly naive. Oh, I just thought of something. Would you be interested in some pictures? What kind of pictures? Some snaps of Tony Hendren. Oh, yes, I would be interested. <laughs> when Felice left, I took them for safekeeping. Mother Godby would have had a fit if he'd found them. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I keep them in my purse constantly. Here they are. Mm. Mm. This is Tony Hendren? Yes. Isn't he handsome? I think he looks a lot like Gregory Peck. Mm, yes, in a wilted sort of way. Here's another one of him, taken at the beach. Mm. Felice couldn't grown up that much. Oh, that isn't Felice with him in the picture. Oh? Oh, who is it? I don't know. Well, I certainly admire Tony's taste in brunettes. Barbara, I can't thank you enough for your help. Feel free to call on me at any time. Thank you. Uh, tell me, how are you so sure of your diagnosis of Felice? Uh, have you studied psychoanalysis? Studied it? Mr. Templer, my family sent me to an analyst at the age of three. Oh, but now you're completely normal. Of course. Except that now I've taken up Dianetics. Only to straighten out my friends, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you and goodbye, Mary Worth. Did you learn anything, Templer? Anything? No, Mr. Banning. I learned practically nothing at the school further than what you told me. You, uh, have the money? I'm getting it, yes. And you're still determined to pay off Hendren. I'd do anything to keep my daughter from marrying a blackmailer like Hendren. Yes, I agree. He doesn't strike me as being the ideal son-in-law. Well, I'll see you here later tonight, Danny. Uh, Templar, I know I'm imposing on you. If, 
If you'd rather not come tonight... I want to. Men like Hendren have been known to pull a double cross. In the meantime, I'll keep on looking. Thank you, Templar. Uh, I'll ring for Edward to show you up. Oh, don't bother. I can find my way out. I bought a small road map on my way in. Uh, yes, it is a large house, isn't it? <laughs> uh, very well, I... I'll see you tonight. Right, huh? Terribly sorry. That's perfectly all right. It was my fault. I'm glad. Glad? That we've met. May I ask why? Because I have something belonging to you. A photograph. A photograph? Yes. You look quite beautiful in a bathing suit. Oh? And the man with you looked uh, very much like Gregory Peck. And what do you think we ought to do about it? Oh, I would suggest talking it over. Over a drink. That seems basically sound. What'll it be? Um... Anne, scotch over ice. Oh, mine, Simon. Uh, two Johnny Walker over ice, waiter. Yes, sir. About that photograph, Simon. Was there really a photograph, or can we go on to other things? There really was, unfortunately. Do you know someone named Tony Hendren, Ann? Perhaps I'd better look at the photograph first. Oh. Here you are. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I know Tony. It's an old picture, though. I hope you haven't changed. I don't think so. Two scotches over ice. Oh, thank you. Well, here's to the eternal verities, the things that will never change. What was it you wanted to know about Tony? He's run off with a million dollars. Are you surprised? Not if it was wearing a skirt. Do you know Miles Banning? I know him. But it surprised you that he's paying $200,000 for Herndon not to marry his daughter? It wouldn't surprise me, no. You mind if I ask a question about you, Anne? Oh, it's about time, Simon. How do you know Hendren and Banning? I was the former Mrs. Banning's nurse. Does private nursing pay well enough for uh, mink? Being a wife does. And in this case, I earn it. I'm the present Mrs. Banning. Oh, he didn't tell me about you. He wouldn't. You're investigating Felice and Tony for him. Mm -hmm. In a sense, yes. I have an appointment. I'm afraid I have to go. Oh, but you haven't finished your drink. Call me any time you feel like investigating anything. Please. Anything? I want to see you again. You're very attractive. Goodbye. Goodbye, indeed. Uh, the lady leaving? You wish to order anything to eat, sir? Of course. This is my lunch hour, waiter. What'll it be? Bring me another straight scotch. <laughs> Clark, I wonder if our friend Hendren will come tonight after all, Mr. Bannon. He'll come. With 200000 in cash waiting for him, who wouldn't come? You still determined to give it to him? What else can I do? I think I'll go out and have a look around. All right, Templar. I'll keep an eye on the driveway. If anyone comes, I'll be close by. Try and get a little rest. I won't be long. Who's there? Huh. Funny. Thought I heard something move. Oh, I'm sorry I stepped on you, Kitty. But you should be more careful. You can see better out here than I can. In fact, I can't see anything. Yeah, I might as well head back for the... with me. Oh, thanks, Kitty. Hey, who hit me? Yeah. I'll never aspire to be the Robin Hood of modern crime, Kitty. It's very hard on the skull. Oof. Wonder how long I was out. Ten, fifteen? I better get back to... Hey, crime is picking up, Kitty. Come on. Uh, 
three shots and not one of them missed. Who are you? I'm Simon Templer. You're Felice? Yes. You better go inside. Is it Tony? Is he dead? I'm afraid he is. Quick, before the others come. You're the same, aren't you? Yes. Promise me you'll find out who killed him. Promise me. I'll do my best, Felice. You uh, loved him very much? Tony? I hated him. I hated him. <laughs> Everybody here? I won't keep you long, Mr. Banning, just long enough to get your statement. Mr. Templer, you said on the phone that you found the body. Yes, that's right. It's quite simple, Lieutenant. Uh, Lieutenant Thompson, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, well, my wife and I and my daughter were upstairs when we heard the shots. I came down and found the safe open and a large sum of cash missing. How large? $200,000. Templer then came in and told me a man had been shot. And I found it was a man named Henron who used to work for me. Apparently, he and the Confederate opened the safe, quarreled over the money, and Hendren got shot. Mm-hmm. That check with you, Mrs. Benning? That's all I know about it, yes. So you see, there's no point in carrying on this discussion any further. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Benning. I appreciate your motives, but after all, a man's been killed here tonight. The lieutenant is entitled to a more complete explanation than that. Very well, but uh, I'd like to ask if my daughter could go to her room. She, uh, she's had a bad shock. Certainly, Mr. Benning. Go on, Felice. I'll be up to see you soon, dear. All right, Father. Uh, what I told you, Lieutenant, was not quite all, uh, though in principle thoroughly correct. The truth is, uh, my daughter had run off with Hendren. Uh, I, I agreed to pay him 200000 to bring her back. You saw him tonight, Mr. Banning? He came here, yes. I paid him the money and he left. I never saw him again. Mr. Templer, were you with Mr. Banning when he paid him the money? I'm sorry to say that I was unconscious at the time. Uh, Lieutenant, I hardly need point out how desirous I am of having my daughter's name kept out of this. Oh, I'll do my best, Mr. Banning. I, I'm a father myself. Thank you. I'll be grateful. I'll be very grateful. And uh, now, could we go to our rooms? I, I'm afraid I of feel... Of course, a... I'm sorry I kept you this long. Well, I understand that's your job. Come, dear. Good night, gentlemen. You won't mind if we look around, Mrs. Banning? Of course not. Please ring if you want anything. Certainly, Mrs. Banning. Don't you worry about us. No, don't worry about us, Mrs. Banning. Good night. Good night. Well, Lieutenant? Oh, I don't doubt that Hendron did have someone else in with him on this blackmail scheme, and then he uh, knocked him off. It looks pretty simple. And if you believe that, you'll look pretty simple. What do you mean? The killer is a mysterious intruder seen by no one. It's logical. Uh... Look, Templer, Banning's a big man in this town. You know how long it takes to work up from pounding a beat to a detective lieutenant? Fifteen years. You know how long it takes to go back to a beat? Fifteen minutes. So I'm buying his story until I find out it's wrong. Fair enough, Lieutenant. Can I go along for the ride? Oh, sure, sure. We'll start checking tomorrow. Meet me back here at ten in the morning. Good. I've got a few questions I'd like to ask Miss Banning. A couple of things I'd like to ask Mrs. Banning, too. Lieutenant, get a grip on yourself. Remember, you're a family man. I am most happy to answer any questions. And so is my daughter. Aren't you, dear? Yes, Father. Mrs. Banning will be down soon? Uh, unfortunately, Lieutenant, Mrs. Banning is indisposed this morning. Oh. Uh, however, she knows nothing of the affair. Could we ask Felice a few questions alone, Mr. Banning? Felice? No, Father. I'd rather you stayed with me. Oh, very well. Felice, did you come back to the house with Hendren last night, and uh, was there anyone with him? But Felice came back early in the evening. She was still obstinate about marrying Hendron, so I still had to deal with him. You were in love with this Hendron, Miss Banning? Yes, uh, she was. Just a minute now. Let Felice answer, Mr. Banning. Were you in love with Hendron, Felice? Father told you I was. And you were? If he told you I was. Anything further, gentlemen? Do you know where Hendron lived, Felice? Father? Go ahead, dear. In a rooming house, 312 Main Street. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Let's go, Templar. I hope you find Hendron's confederate, Lieutenant. I, I hope you find him. And if you recover the money, there'll be a liberal reward in it for you. Well, thank you, Mr. Banning. 
Uh, we'll be in touch. Good day, Mr. Banning. Felice. Uh, goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye, Mr. Templer. <laughs> oh, do you hear that? Might be in for a big reward if we recover the 200 grand. And Lieutenant, stick to the Irish sweepstakes. The odds are much more in your favor. <laughs> Owes me six weeks' rent, the dirty... Easy there, Mother. Speak not ill of the dead. He's dead? Very. Got himself shot last night. Shot? Ain't that just my luck? That's three I lost that way this month. Oh, well, you'll find months like that. They put a ceiling on rent, so I don't they put a ceiling on how many deadbeat tenants can get shot in a month. I'm going to write my congressman if I could write. Choke back your tears for a moment, dear heart and gentle person. Uh, what did you know about Hendren? Did he have any friends? Him? Who'd be a friend of his, that dirty no good? Yes. Now, let's start again. Nothing you can tell us about him at all? Nothing except he came to me two months ago saying he was coming into $10,000, wanted to borrow a ten spot. Did you lend it to him? Two weeks ago, he had a story he was going to get 200000 instead of ten. He said, said he'd pay me double my back rent. What did you do? Locked his trunk in the basement, that's what. <laughs> Much good it did me, nothing in it but hair oil and mustache wax. Tell me, what am I going to do with mustache wax? Well, you might wax your mustache. What? Why, well, you... I searched his room, but I see... Lieutenant, I can... have you got a date for tonight? Why? Because I want to make one for you. Business or pleasure? The successful man is the man who combines both. Be at my apartment around nine, will you? I may need you kind of girls do you go out with? A good policeman, Lieutenant, is theoretically able to cope with any foreseeable emergency. Good evening, Simon. Oh, come in, Anne. So glad you could come. So glad you called me. My, candlelight and champagne. How exciting. Hmm. May I uh, take your wrap? Please. You're so tall, Simon. Can you unbend? Mm, I can try. Mm. <laughs> uh, thank you. And you dropped my wrap, Simon. Dropped it right on the floor. Don't you dare pick it up. I wasn't thinking of picking it up. I wasn't thinking about it at all. What were you thinking of, Simon? Tell me. Go on. Tell her, Simon. Tell her. Oh, uh, good evening, Banning. Miles, did you follow me again? Don't you ever get tired? I get more tired than I can tell you. That's why it's not going to happen again, Anne. I mean it. You're a pretty pitiful object. I'm warning you, Anne. Put that gun away, Banning. You'd never shoot her. No. No, I couldn't. But that doesn't apply to you, Templar. You're too smart anyway. I was against involving you in this from the beginning. You'll remember I argued against it, Anne. You'll remember Shut I... Up. You're talking too much, Niles. Don't be ridiculous. He's got us figured out anyway. Why do you think he asked you here if it wasn't to trap us? Why do you think? I... I don't want you to say it. Stand away from me. Easy, Benny. You haven't got a chance. No? No? <laughs> You're the one who hasn't a chance. You're the one. Now he gives us repartee. Put down the gun, Miles, and let's get out of here. Oh, no, 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 we can't. We can't leave him here. He, he'd turn us in. Keep me out of this, please. You see? I can't leave him here. You both gang up against me. I'm afraid it's pretty much up with you anyway, Mr. Banning. You killed Hendron, didn't you? Well, what if I did? He was double-crossing me. The two of them were, he and Anne. Yes. You were to give him 10000 for his part in it, and he and Anne decided to take the whole 200000 money from Felice's estate. Well, I had to take the money from her estate. Anne would have left me. She said so. She kept goading me. So you rigged up this blackmail story so you'd have an excuse to take the money. Later, if you were called to account as trustee of the estate or trust fund, I would be a witness that the money was spent on behalf of Felice. <laughs> It's neat. I didn't know until last night Anne was really planning to go away with him. I shot him. I had to... I had to keep her. You better give me the gun, Banning. No, no. Everything will be all right. You're the only one who knows. It'll be all right, Anne. You'll see. It'll be all right. Now, stand away from me. The police are on their way, Mr. Banning. In fact, the door is opening now. Oh, no, you don't. That's an old trick, Templar, and I'm not falling for it. I'm not... Let go of my Mother, arm. Mother, no! Oh. 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 
Give me that gun, Danny. All right, drop it. Drop it, I said. Oh, thanks for dropping in, Lieutenant. My arm. Miles, you hurt me. Anne. Anne, I didn't mean it. I, I didn't mean Get it. away from her, Banning. Well, let me look. Flesh wound bad, but not too bad. I, I didn't mean to, Anne. I didn't mean to. Phyllis hit my arm. It, it wasn't me. Mother. I swear I didn't mean to. I swear it, Anne. Take Felice out of here, will you, Lieutenant? Sure, come on, Miss Banning. This is no, no place for you. No, please, I want to stay with my father. I want to stay with my father. Felice, thank you for what you did. You might have saved my life. I didn't do anything. Well, of course you did. If you hadn't grabbed your father's arm and deflected his aim, Mr. Templer might have been killed. I didn't touch father. Felice, you... Father shot her. He aimed at her and he shot her. I didn't touch him. He realized how bad she was. And he hated her. He shot her. He doesn't love her anymore. He only loves me. Yeah, but Miss Banning... Oh, let I... her alone, Lieutenant. If this gives her any comfort, let her go on convincing herself. She's going to need all the comfort she can get with what's to come. Feel like a drink, Lieutenant? Don't mind if I do. It's one case I was glad to get rid of. Made me feel kind of unclean. Mm. Banning wasn't a very nice person, I'm afraid. Or Anne or Hendon. He had his daughter convinced, though. Yes, he did. Banning may have been all right at one time. Yeah, what happened to him? He got afraid, I guess. Mm. Afraid of losing his youth. That's what Anne represented. And afraid of losing his money, which she spent for him faster than he could make it. Doesn't pay to get afraid, Lieutenant. Oh, I guess not. Uh, here's to not being afraid. Here's to not being afraid. Yeah, but, uh... How do you keep from it? Mm, you stave it off from one minute to the next. <laughs> Another drink for the next minute's fear? By all means. By all means. been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here's our star, Vincent Price. In tonight's cast, you heard Peggy Weber, Gloria McMillan, Maggie Morley, Ted Osborne, Theodore Von Elts, and Larry Dobkin. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of The Saint. Good night. Tonight's script of The Saint was written by Dick Powell, Don Stanley speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Today's the day for the premiere of NBC's gigantic Sunday afternoon broadcast, The Big Show. Every Sunday afternoon starting today, you'll hear an hour and a half of the greatest stars in radio. Performers like Fred Allen, Jimmy Durante, Ethel Merman, Frankie Lane, Meredith Wilson, and many, many more. It's The Big Show on NBC.